Packer Warehouse TV segment where we show you how to get your trade craft on. That is, we'll show you how to use some of the latest and greatest tools available to the InfoSec industry. Now, here's a storyline you might have heard before. You research some amazing wireless vulnerability, responsibly disclose it, only to find the vendor hand waves it away as highly sophisticated and requires a hacker hiding in the bushes or a blacked out scary van somewhere. Well, that Kool-Aid storyline just got a little harder to drink, thanks to this little baby right here. Introducing the Portapack, it's basically a software-defined radio, spectrum analyzer, and encoder-decoder that fits in the palm of your hand. Today, we'll show you how to use the Portapack in a simple spectrum analyzer to find and record signals in the lab or while you're in the field. At the heart of the Portapack is the famous HackRF SDR. The Portapack physically plugs onto the HackRF like a shield and provides a nice touch display and a jog dial. The latest firmware includes a mode switch that allows you to connect your laptop as a traditional HackRF or run in mobile mode as the Portapack. First, we'll show you how to connect a laptop to find and decode an audio signal in HackRF mode, then we'll switch over to Portapack mode so you can see the difference for yourself. So to begin, you'll need a Linux machine running GQRX, GRC, or your SDR program of choice. Now, we'll be using GQRX. We'll first connect the Portapack to USB for power, the laptop USB port is just fine for now. Got power. Now we'll navigate to HackRF option and activate. Scroll down and activate. It's always a good idea to run HackRF underscore info to ensure it's communicating with your laptop. Once confirmed it's online, we'll start GQRX and walk through the settings. Select the adapter, then we'll set our bandwidth to 1 megahertz for this demo. Next, we'll set the frequency to find our target. Now, in the field, it's a good idea if you already know the frequency range of your target. If not, there are scanner programs available, but it's much easier if you know where to start. This can usually be found on the device data sheet somewhere or from the FCC ID, if your target device has one. The data sheet is pretty straightforward. Here we see the data sheet gives us the range for this particular transmitter, which just happens to be a lapel mic. We'll be able to find, listen in, and record the audio from the microphone. Now, if you can't find a data sheet, you're not up the creek yet. You can still try to find the FCC ID of the device and look up the frequency that way. To find the FCC ID, first try an internet search of the model number. Check the support links of the device to get a copy of the manual. It's usually listed in there. Other times, unboxing videos will even give you a peek of the FCC ID on the box. Once you have the FCC ID, you'll need to hop over to the FCC lookup website to run a quick search. We're going to use FCC.io, which is a simple front end for the official FCC website. We'll enter the FCC ID and look at the results. Now, these results are from the official FCC website, and we're going to look over at the furthest right column that shows frequency. Once we have our magic frequency, we simply populate the frequency field in GQRX and begin our hunt for the signal. We'll start with 220 megahertz and step forward until we've found our signal. OK, now here's a signal with some activity that might be what we're looking for. Now, we need to determine if it's the correct one. In this case, we kind of cheated because we have access to the signal source. So we just turned it on and off again to verify we were looking at the right frequency. In the field, a simple technique is to correlate signal strength and proximity to the source. Then look and listen until you find it. Here it is, around 230 megahertz. Now, we need to isolate the signal, fine tune the bandwidth, and adjust the frequency. The strongest signal is right here at 230.6934 megahertz. Once we find the signal, we'll notice that there's no audio. This is because we need to set the built-in audio demodulator to the correct modulation scheme. In this case, wideband FM. Other built-in modes include AM and FM narrow. AM is often used in aircraft voice communication, while narrow and wide FM are used for most other voice signals. Some signals will be audio in nature, but will require further post-processing, such as weather satellite photos and amateur TV. Not that kind of amateur TV. Now, if you're hunting for a signal from a distance, try turning on the PA or power amplifier and turning up the gain. Like the name implies, this is the front end amplifier, and it's used to increase the gain of the incoming signal. Turn down the gain if the signal is too powerful and causing distortion to the audio. Now that our audio is clearly picked up, it's time to record it to disk. Recording can be accomplished on GQRX by simply pressing the record button. And once you press record, all signals will go to the default program folder. If you instead wanted to direct the audio to, say, another real-time program for post-processing, think weather radar, now is the time where you will begin piping the audio. So now you've seen what it takes to capture audio in stock SDR mode, we'll switch over to standalone port pack mode. 
Running the Porta Pack by itself is much simpler. We'll just need a USB battery pack to take it portable, headphones, and an antenna. As you can see, this is a much more covert approach. No laptops, bushes, or scary black fans required. Now, if this was 1987, we would look pretty normal, but since the Walkman died out, we do look a bit suspicious. Google body-worn antennas. All right, once in the field, we'll simply connect the battery pack for power. There we go. Click receive mode, audio, tune to that same 230.6934 frequency we found earlier. There it is, you can see it on the waterfall display. I'll set the gain to give us a nice audio feed. Amplifier on, and turn the volume up. We can now simply and covertly monitor audio. The latest Porta Pack firmware also gives us the record feature. So plug in a micro SD card, click record. Now all those signals are belong to us. So keep in mind, this is only one of the great things that Porta Pack can do. There are many more capabilities such as decoding ADSB, TPMS tracking, AIS tracking, NOAA weather satellite decoding, scanning, and open source firmwares that do much, much more. So, as you can see, the Porta Pack is a simple, powerful, open source tool that enables a lot more covert pen testing in the field. I wouldn't be surprised if this tool alone reclassifies wireless attacks once deemed sophisticated into the not so much category. Thanks for watching Hacker Warehouse TV Tradecraft. Hope you learned something about this incredible tool, and we'll see you next time.